Good evening, and welcome to all of you who have joined us in person, via Facebook Live, and on Zoom. Welcome all. For those of you who are here in person, please take a moment to ensure that your self, cell phones are off or on silence. Please, thank you. All off? Good, okay. We begin our Wednesday evening service with a pre-service meditation. So I invite you to get still and close your eyes. As we play the God's the Love That I Am chant, you may choose to chant along with it or simply follow along silently, repeating this mantra to yourself. If your mind wanders, and your mind will wander, simply bring it back to this mantra, God's the love that I am. Enjoy the meditation. I'll bring you out in five minutes.
And so as our meditation comes to a close, gently bring your awareness back into your surroundings, into your body. And as you feel ready, open your eyes. Welcome to those of you who have joined us while our meditation was in progress. We're so glad to have you with us virtually or in person. Let's begin with our opening chant, God is in this place. Let us join together in prayer. As we recognize glorious God, all-knowing, all-powerful, everywhere present, all love. If it is not of love, it is not of God. God is love and kindness and serenity and health and all that is good. God is the good of which there is no opposite and no equal. And I absolutely know that there is nothing that can separate me from my creator. I am an emanation of the divine. I know this for myself. I know this for each and every one of you, whether on Zoom, Facebook, in the sanctuary, or anyone out in the world. We are all emanations of the divine, and we all have attributes of the divine. And I speak my word for this service this evening, absolutely without a doubt knowing that Reverend Sidney is a loving channel for God, that she speaks kindness and love, and everything is done with love in her heart, and love, and love, and love, and laughter, and joy. And I absolutely know that we are blessed by our musicians, Sam and Margaret. We are blessed by sound and lighting with Adam, and we are so grateful for all the volunteers and the staff that put this service together. And I absolutely know that everything is divinely guided and divinely appointed. And with a grateful heart, I release my word into the law of mind. And so it is, and together we say, Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Sorry. What was 
it again? <laughs> I was running it. I'm sitting over there. It's all there, but now it's not. It's gone. The rain. It's not the wind. It's the rain. You'll understand there's a lot of this and that in this song. It's so confusing. Okay. Thank you for loving me anyway. will grow the seasons change and for all we know love sprouting up all around us i have been high and i've been low i have held on and i have let go i've walked a path of joy and sorrow but above it all i'm grateful thank you for my to guide me ever onward. Thank you for my health. I thank you for my healing. Thank you for this beautiful day. I thank you for my life. I'm blessed and I am perfect. I thank you for this beautiful day. Out of the dark into the light of all brilliant and brand new way. Our most powerful prayers are where we say thank you in advance, even when we're not feeling it, even when we're not in that place of, of feeling that radiant health, feeling that healing, all of that. We, we go to that place of expecting it, declaring it, and being grateful for it. Um, as I was sitting there meditating and everything was sort of, the service was proceeding, um, you know, I, I sometimes have another narrative going on in my head. And so Gail um, did this wonderful affirmation, this wonderful invocation about um, knowing that the, the loving word of God flows through Reverend Sidney. I thought, gosh, I'm really glad she didn't say the snarky word of God flows through. Because <laughs> I'm really able to do that too, as I'm sure you know. <laughs> but... Um, We've all heard this question before. If you didn't know how old you were, how old would you be? I was considering that question today, and I started to think of some other questions. So let's ponder some of them. If you didn't know your country or your culture of origin, where would you be from? Where would you want to be from? If you could have named yourself at birth, what name would you have chosen? 
And when you see one of those, ask your doctor, is such and such a medicine right for you, those commercials or ads, do you ever find yourself with a, just a bit of concern about your health? Oh, and by the way, I just heard that this month means that we are back and it's cold and flu season again. And Sam, I didn't even get you a card. I'm sorry. <laughs> we celebrate that stuff. There is a culture that celebrates illness. There's a culture that celebrates all of that. It, the culture is the advertising culture, but we all jump in with it. We try not to, but it's very, very tempting. You know, we are an interesting society. We really want to experience this radiant health, dynamic energy, and this sense of emotional, mental, and physical well-being. Yet we are, at least I am, I can be easily susceptible to images and messages that create, I think it's a vibrational resonance. And, and then it becomes a participation And what what our collective ideas of illness and that lack of radiant health. So I was watching something the other day, and I was really amazed at my own response, and it was an ad for a cold medicine. And I momentarily, just for a second, had the thought that I'd better put it on my list for the next shopping trip, just in case I needed it later. That is so not me. I don't do colds and flus. In fact, since, <laughs> since COVID, we've been wearing masks. I really don't do them. I am like healthy as a horse. So the realization that I was actually planning for the next time I might not feel well was fascinating to me. I didn't know that I still had that little thread of, of, of participation in that idea. And I was, I just, I really thought about it. It was so curious. You know, the founder of this teaching, Ernest Holmes, taught about what we call the race mind or the race consciousness. He basically taught that you and I are surrounded by and filled by this presence, this divine presence. We'll call it the upper part of your being. It is the truth of who and what you are. Of course, it's geographically not upper, but it is a higher level of knowing. We also have our outward experiences. And he said that it's that area in between our divine self and our human experiencing self that there is a, quote, field of subconscious reactions which have been gathered up throughout the ages. Isn't that interesting? That's race consciousness. Okay, so I was thinking, because I love to think in metaphor, and this is what I came up with. I don't know if it works or not, but it was fun for me. So think of it like a great pool in which lots of magnificent ideas, creativity, innovation, and delight, they're all, they're all swimming around with lots of fear, agreement about failure and suffering, and negative thinking. So race consciousness is like a pool of invisible thought fish. We drop our line, and if it's baited with possibility and love bait, we catch and reel in the possibility and love fish, the ideas, the thinking. If the line is baited with fear or what if bait, we reel in more fear and the thinking that seems to thrive in the realm of that disastrous what if, what if, what if. So you and I participate in this pool of this, this collective thought. And depending on what our beliefs and our feelings and our beliefs about life are, we draw from it and we also contribute to it. But most of the time, we don't even know that we've got that line in the water. We don't know that we've got our, our, our poles baited and ready to reel in. You know, this inadvertent burst of planning for my next cold that I had when I saw the commercial for cold medicine was like me reeling in my line without even knowing I had gone fishing or that I had bait on that hook. And that was interesting, yet look how easily I got hooked into thinking about illness. And I did it unconsciously, as if it were part of my normal thought flow, and it's really not. So in this thing called you, Ernest Holmes wrote, today you may be suffering from the effect of race consciousness and your own beliefs, but today you can begin to change them. You are a creator, not a creature. That's important to remember. We're not creatures. But he wrote more. The desire that you have to be something, to do something, is a mental 
echo of your mind in the spirit which already exists within you. It is an impact of your divine and spiritual self upon your mental or psychological self. So think about that. That desire, that desire is the divine. It is the spirit in you seeking an avenue of expression through you. It's the real self you would like to be. The deep spiritual self having all knowledge, having all access to the power, ah, being one with life. This is the self that can heal the sick and raise the dead. It is a transcendent, triumphant self. So think about that. Within you is the transcendent, triumphant self. Who woke up this morning and looked in the mirror and said, I am the transcendent, triumphant self. Most of us don't do that on a daily basis. And yet, that is the thought that we need to, that's the one that we bait the hook with, and that's the one that we also reel back in correspondingly. That's the one. I am the transcendent, triumphant self because it is the truth of our being. It's not just that God is in this place, although I was thinking too during your song, God is in this place. It's not just that God is in this room. God is in this place. Love is in this place. Joy is in this place. This place, this place, this place, this, this, all of that. That's who and what we are. That is the truth of who and what we are. So how do we shift from reeling in that bad stuff, the negative stuff from the pool of race consciousness, to catching and reeling in the thinking of possibility, great purpose, and yeah, radiant health and wholeness. So I remember that over 20 years ago when I was a practitioner student, one of the books that we had to read was this wonderful yet really long-winded thing called Principles of Healing by H.B. Jeffrey. And I know that Lark Mark LaPonte is probably sitting back there going, oh no. It's actually out of print now. I have two copies. I collect them because I'm a geek. Um, I really like the book. But it's hard to find. Anyway, I read this today. And he wrote, in spiritual healing, the more you can get out of the way, the more you can just be nothing, as it were, that God may be all in all, the better and quicker and more permanent will the healing be. The best healer is the one who sees nothing to heal. Only reality, capital R, only the divine, capital D, and only the truth, capital T. And it's that capital T truth that God is all there is that as we practice and cultivate an awareness of it and invoke an awareness of it and say thank you for it even when we don't feel it or see it or, or think that we have it, that we begin to recognize that it is the truth of our being. And that's what begins to inform everything else little by little by little by little. Truth, capital T, is what we then bring into our lives to that which we have come to recognize as the small t truth. The small t truth. But how do you do that? How do you turn from this thing that might be going on? I mean, really practically, how do you do it? How in the world do you do that when the doctor is giving you a diagnosis, a prognosis, and the world seems to bombard you with messages about not just claiming your physical challenges or diseases, but it also holds out these inviting and frankly sexy images of people who apparently have asked their doctor if a certain prescription drug is right for them. You all know that. Now, in no way am I standing here and saying that whatever is going on for you is not real. I'm not saying it's not painful. I have walked the journey of illness and terminal illness with many people over the years, some of them my family. And I know that if someone is in the midst of an experience of dis-ease, of pain, of suffering, it's hard and it hurts. And it can be scary. But what I am saying is that you and I have not just the ability but the power to start here and now, to start today, as Ernest said, to draw a bigger circle around our conditions. And that circle includes the omnipresence of God. It includes the omniscience of God, and it includes the omnipotence of God. 
because God is bigger than all of it and surrounds and fills all of it. We might be experiencing something that appears to be not God, but guess what? We are still in the presence of God. There's a Zen idea that says, even in the apparent darkness, the light is still present. Even in the apparent death, the life is still present is where I go. Even in apparent pain, joy is still present. Even in apparent sickness, healing, wholeness is still present. The wholeness of God, God doesn't get sick. God doesn't break its arm. God doesn't need a hip replacement like I did, <laughs> right? And, and so we still, we move into wholeness. And what's interesting about this thing of healing is a lot of people think that it's an either or, either you're really, really in tune and you know that you are connected with God and you are fully healed and whole right now and it is the truth and so it is or you're a disaster and you have to go to the hospital and get a new hip so what I want to tell you is I've been doing this thing for a long time this teaching and I see some people here who hi Amy <laughs> who were with me 25 years ago in this teaching and what I know is that Despite all of my spiritual practice and all of the knowing that I have and the wisdom and the experience and the teachers and so much and the intuition and all that I'm open and receptive to, it's doubtful that I'm going to be walking on water before I leave this planet. And it's not a priority for me. It's just not a big thing. But you know what I do have a consciousness for? I have a consciousness for good supportive health care and good supportive doctors for good health practices. I have a consciousness for attracting that and for knowing that and for being in a place of, of wisdom. I had a, a spiritual student come up to me a couple of years ago, in fact, before I got Hazel. By the way, <laughs> in every book you ever read about Ernest Holmes, they always refer to his beloved Hazel, his wife. And I thought, wow, if I'm not going to be angry and ticked off about the fact that I have to get a, a hip replacement at such a young, vibrant age, um, I need to make peace with it. So I started calling my hip my beloved Hazel. Because I thought, okay, i got to make friends with this thing. And I had a student come up to me who said, you know, I'm really ashamed because I haven't been able to heal my body of these digestive issues. I haven't been able to heal my body. And I said, wow, wow, you know what? I haven't been able to heal my body of this hip thing, but I know that I have a good doctor. I also know that I'm not going to like go learn how to do surgery on myself in the next six months. You know, I really don't want to take a blade to myself. I really don't. In fact, I accidentally cut myself when I was slicing mushrooms the other night. It's good that I don't do surgery. I have to tell you. So I said, but what I do have is a consciousness of being able to attract that which is healthy around me, the healthy support that I need, if that is something that I need to experience. And I trust that. I really, really trust that. It's that same wisdom that when, by the way, when I did cut my finger just a little bit, the moment that happened, you know, my body, the intelligence within my body was rushing towards that little tiny nick and healing it. The healing process was already beginning. And because there is one mind, sometimes that healing process requires that we join with others. We will join with them in consciousness, in spirituality, and yes, in medicine and in science, because it's one mind. And it is that letting that wisdom fill us where it can and where we will allow it to. When we turn our attention and focus to God. We are literally turning our attention and focus away from the conditions, right? We're denying those conditions the nourishment and the feeding of our thinking. Does that make sense? Okay. We have stopped feeding them with our thoughts. We've stopped energizing them with our thoughts. And we are in this big, great energetic field. We don't deny that there are conditions or challenges. We don't deny the experiences that people call evil in the world, but we do deny giving any of those things our precious heart, soul, time, and energy, focus, passion. 
we don't do that. We remind ourselves that we don't have to do that. And as we turn that focus away from that which appears to trouble us, that which appears to confuse or to hurt or cause us pain or whatever it is, as we turn to God, not, we, without denying it, we just, okay, you're there, I've drawn a bigger circle, now I'm going to be over here and focus on the truth. When we can begin to disarm the thinking around our conditions and the challenges, there's the spiritual alchemy that takes place. The conditions and the challenges get disarmed, little by little. I'm gonna say that again. When we can begin to disarm the thinking around our conditions and our challenges, there is a spiritual alchemy that happens. The conditions and the challenges become disarmed as well. So I think that a lot of healing is disarming the power that we have given to that which we think we are experiencing or we know we're experiencing or somebody else has said, this is what you are experiencing. You know, one of my favorite teachers who is part of our New Thought lexicon is a woman by the name of Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman. Now, she left this planet a few years back, but she began in unity as the first black woman to ever graduate and be ordained from there. She went on to found a huge and influential work in Chicago it's called Christ Universal Temple. In fact, I still take classes online from the teachers there because I just find it so powerful and so inspiring. I love what I get there. I also love what I get with Science of Mind. This, her teaching is more of a unity base, but I gotta tell you, the one teacher that I really, really like is such a wonderful alchemist of unity and religious science principles and weaving them together that it absolutely feeds me and nourishes that part of me that wants to know more, that wants to live in a greater way. So whenever someone came to Johnny with a diagnosis, whether it was a major thing and terminal or minor and manageable, this is how she taught them to disarm it. She insisted that from now on, their condition was to only be referred to as the bonkus of the conchus. The bonkus of the conchus. That's right, she really absolutely did. And if you think about it, how can you not start to relax and disarm your fears and your concerns around something? It's such a silly name. And when there's a relaxing of any kind in our thinking and our souls and our spirits and our hearts, if only for a moment, that's the opening. That's the only little opening that spirit needs to begin to express as that activity of wholeness as that activity of life. That's its nature. It's what it's been coded to do. We've been coded to do it too, but nobody told us. You know, the spiritual journey is one of remembering, forgetting, remembering, and forgetting, remembering, and forgetting. You see, God doesn't know the difference between big or small, or really big and really small. You and I are the ones who assign the values of big and small to those experiences, whether it's cancer or a cold. We assign the value, whether I need $10 or a million dollars. We assign the value. God, infinite wisdom, intelligence, doesn't know. And by the way, it doesn't care, because spiritual law just works and says yes, right? It has one answer, yes. So when we read about how Jesus healed lepers, raised the dead, and cured insanity, we simply do not ever hear about him asking diagnostic questions. Have you noticed? So tell me, Lazarus, how long have you been dead? Can you imagine? So um, lepers, uh, tell me more about your symptoms do you lose limbs all at once, or is it more like a gradual flesh-eating virus thing where it just sort of begins to, like, fall off? Have you tried any OTC or topical ointments? Did you ask your doctor if Viagra was right for you? And while he may have wished that his mom wouldn't just bring him to weddings to brag about his winemaking skills, Jesus never spent time, attention, or focus on the apparent magnitude or prognosis of a problem. He never got into opinions or judgments, and he never referred people to another specialist. And what this means to us is that a walking, breathing, active expression of the omnipresence of God, 
our great example, Jesus really ever did one thing. He remembered his own divinity. And in so doing, reminded everyone around him of their divinity. Jeffrey said the truth is its own power. Think about that for a moment. Truth, capital T truth, is its own power. We don't have to give power to it or take power from it. It is that which is always, always, <sighs> always present, always active. Truth is its own power. Clearing the way for truth to be that power is how you and I collaborate with God. And how do we clear the way? We remove the obstructions that might get in the way of truth's power. We disarm anything we've been given power to, right? Anything that we have given power to by our focus, our attention, our fear, we love it because it's our bonkus of the conchus. We love it because it's ours. It's a bonkus of the conchus. So we disarm it and remember that this thing that somebody else named we choose to call it our bonkus of the conchus. That is the word. That is speaking our word because if we can disarm, turn away from that which can absolutely galvanize us in a way that brings us fear and panic and turn to a place of, oh, wow. Bonkus of the conchus. I like that. We open up. So at the beginning of the talk, I asked you some questions, and now I have one more for you to mull over. So you remember how I asked you, if you didn't know how old you were, how old would you be? Try this one. If you didn't know the names for any of your physical conditions or any diagnosis you've been given, what would you call your conditions or your diagnoses? In other words, if you didn't know what you had, what would you, what would you have? If you didn't know what you had, what do you have? Would you be willing to agree with Shakespeare, who said, what's in a name? A rose by any other name would smell as sweet or something like that. It's 300 years ago. Give me a break. So the moment we give something a name, we give it meaning and power. We give it significance. Names have great power. Names have great power. If you study anything at all about language and about ancient Hebrew, you will see that names have great power, they have great meaning, and they are carefully chosen. In fact, the whole Old Testament is all about the symbolism represented in those names, the magnificent allegories in all of the names in the Old Testament. It's not about the stories of, of God becoming not really user-friendly and becoming actually, frankly, a, a drag. Um, the Old Testament is all about us. It's all about those parts of our emotional, spiritual, psychological growing up and our well-being and how we develop and how, how someone else goes through an experience in an allegory and how it is solved and how we go through an experience in our own allegories and how it is transformed, how we are transformed. The moment we give something a name, we give it meaning and power. But the moment we give something the name Bonkus of the Conchus, we give ourselves the power. We give ourselves the space to live, to love, and to breathe once again. So let's pray. So we just take a moment mm, to relax into these chairs, knowing that they are truly the manifestation of the allegory of being held in the arms of God, held in the arms of spirit. We allow ourselves to simply be where our bodies are, knowing that with each breath, we draw closer into the awareness of the presence of spirit, the awareness of the presence of God in every part of our body. We are swimming in this field of consciousness. We are swimming in this pool of consciousness and we choose now to know ourselves as the magnificent fish. We are those magnificent divine ones and those are the ones that are in our school swimming with us. Those are the ideas that we work with. Those are the ideas that we play with. Those are the ideas that play with us that we celebrate and with joy and with ease. Hmm. We, we take delight in. 
So I know for each of us that if that particular area of life that is calling for attention, calling for transformation, calling for more God and less fear, if that area is one of health, if it is a health challenge of some sort, we lovingly look at that, blow it a kiss, call it the bonkers of the conkers, and we turn to the truth. We turn to the light of God, the truth of God, the power and the presence, the love everywhere equally present that is the truth of who we are. And we know that even in the apparent illness, there is wholeness. And if the experience that, that we are concerned about that is pulling out our attention is one of finance or one of relationship or whatever it is, we simply once again know that it is nothing. It is a no thing. We allow whatever name we have called it to be dissolved and we replace it with the bonkers of the conkers, knowing that that lightens us up. It disarms that and it allows the power and presence to work through us to transform our thinking, to trans all life around us so that we are indeed shining, shining channels for good. We remember all life, all life is part of God. In this presence in which there can be no absence, we are celebrations of that. So as I speak these words, and as I bless these words, as I know that they are true, I bless this church, I bless all churches, all paths to God, be they ashrams, synagogues, mosques, whatever they are, whatever they are. For we are here to be as the love of God, to be as the joy of creation. And I know that as I accept these truths for myself, I invite you to say with me, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And it is with a sense of profound gratitude, profound delight, that I release, oh, I release this word into law, knowing that it has no choice but to respond and to co-respond and to demonstrate accordingly. And it is good. It is a party of bonkers of the conkers, and it is all good. And we smile. We let it be so, knowing it is so, and together we say, Amen. All right, removing the mask because I know Doreen will flip out in a really loving way. <laughs> I invite you to join me in this moment of grateful giving. You know, we appreciate so much your love offerings, your tithes, your donations. So I invite you to take your offering, hold it in your hand, 
And even if it's a symbolic holding of it in your hand, hold it to your heart. Say, with, say this with me. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Amen. Blessed always, blessed always. Awesome, beautiful, powerful, inimitable Gail Palat is now going to give you a couple of brief announcements. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Wednesday evening service announcements. Oh, mask. Sorry, Doreen. <laughs> Ways you can make donations. Call the office at 818-762-7566. Go to nhcrs.org slash give. Text the word give, G-I-B-E, to 818-457-3419. Go on, when you shop on Amazon, smile. Select Church of Religious Science North Hollywood as your charity of choice. It will cost you nothing, and the church will benefit. Yes. Prayer with a practitioner is available after the service in person or on Zoom. So if you're on Facebook, transfer to Zoom, and you can pray with a practitioner. Okay. Wednesday night evening service with Reverend Sydney, November 17th. The meditation is at 6.50 p.m., and the service is at 7 p.m. Reverend Sydney's topic next week is speaking your word for inner and outer peace. Good. That sounds like a good one. I'm going to come. I'm going to be here for sure. <laughs> you, Food, and God Part 2, workshop with Reverend Nadine. This Saturday, November 13th from 10 a.m. through 12 noon, in person or on Zoom, and all are welcome. Join Reverend Nadine and the world-renowned transformational Coach Tara Parker, Packer, Tara Packer for this incredible workshop. Tara works somatically, which is the mind and body, and utilizes a variety of techniques, including EFT, which is tapping, to initiate a quicker process with emotional detoxing. Prior to the workshop, please read Women, Food, and God by Janine Roth and keep a daily food journal. And the cost is $30. Youth Church is open on Sundays for our 9.45 a.m. service. We welcome youth of all ages. Here. Christmas Giving Tree event. Mm -hmm. Yay. Mm -hmm. 
Help make a child's Christmas a joyful one. Once again, we have adopted the children of North Valley Caring Services. Practitioner Gail Pilat is on the patio and on Zoom on Sundays to distribute names and gift ideas or find her, me, uh, my contact information on the church website. Or you could ask me my number, just give me a call or whatever. Anyway, deliver all gifts unwrapped to the church with an appropriate size gift bag by November 28th, which is a Sunday. The gift distribution will be on December 9th. And if you'd like to come, let me know. I'll talk to you about it. Grief Support Group. This group, facilitated by practitioner Carol Winokur, meets this Sunday on Zoom at 1 p.m. 2022 Journey of the Heart campaign and pledge forms. Regular and consistent tithing allows the church to budget and plan for the coming year. Please join us by filling a pledge form available in the foyer or on our website, the foyer's back there, and help make 2022 the best year ever. Thank you all. Okay, a couple more announcements. Zoom virtual patio. Before and after Sunday and Wednesday service on Zoom, you could get on the patio with other people and talk and socialize. Zoom meditation, we have every Monday through Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. Visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events, and to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. Thank you. Well played. Well played. Thank you. So before we go, I want to thank people. Um, Liz Racy is holding vigil at home. Um, yes, I know. And Melissa K. Allen has been doing our Facebook Live support. Now dig this. Zoom support has been Lim Romanowski, Alma Alvarez, and Reverend Nadine is our Zoom trainee. So for those of you who think this isn't for you, I want to invite you. We need you for Zoom and Facebook. Talk to Reverend Nadine. She's, she's just um, kicking it, man. She's doing great. Um, okay, lights and sound. Adam, thank you very much. Colleen Butler, Terry Prince, thank you for ushering. Our media team, Doreen Remo, Nikki Zavara, Brenda Jordan, Alex Thompson, you guys rock. Margaret Owens. We can get your music at margaretowens.com. Sam Krieger, we can get your music at samkrieger.com or something like that, right? Why not? Why not? <laughs> or not? And Gail, thank you so much. We are blessed by your presence. And I am so grateful that I have had the chance to be with you tonight. I will see you next week. Thank you so much. Let's pray out, shall we? Okay. Ah, what a delight and a joy to know that we are here to be God's smile, to be God's heart, to be that joy, to be the, 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 the pleasure of creation. We are indeed the pleasure of creation. And we see it in ourselves, we see it in each other. As we look in each other's eyes on the way out tonight, we know, and we know for each other, you are the pleasure of creation. I am the pleasure of creation. I bless you, and I love you, and your bonkus and conkus, and I know that all life is working to support each of us as we go forth into this world. And how wonderful to know that we get to be in community together, and laughter, and healing, and music, and in collaboration with God. So with gratitude, I release this word, all of it, all that we have done tonight, knowing that we are blessed as we move out into the world. <sighs> and I say, and so it is. <laughs> and together we say, amen. amen. All right, I'll see you out there. Come on, follow me.
Don't leave yet. We have one new song. Here we go. Bunkus of the Cunkus. Yeah, come on. Bunkus of the Cunkus. Everybody. Bunkus of the Cunkus. Yeah. Bunkus of the Cunkus. Bunkus of the Cunkus. That's it.